The American Revolution mirrored the French Revolution in so many ways. They occurred around the same time, many key figures were involved in both, they clearly influenced one another and were both fought along the same lines. The deep and unmistakable undercurrent of Freemasonry was involved with both revolutions. Masonic Grand Master Benjamin Franklin, for example, was known to have used his contacts within the fraternity to gain influence with the French so that they would help with the American war effort. One of the key players was a French general and Freemason called Marquis de Lafayette, who is today considered to be an American hero. He left the French army for America to fight against the British, and some have said that without his aid, the war could not have been won. If true, then that one Masonic link alone changed the course of history. George Washington and many of the other generals of the American Revolution were also Freemasons. When Washington was sworn in as the first president, he took his oath on a Masonic Bible taken from his own lodge. That same Bible has since been used for the inaugurations of many other American presidents. The Boston Tea Party, where a large revolt against British taxation occurred, and which initiated a series of events that led directly to the American Revolution, was concocted by men in the Green Dragon Tavern, a well-known meeting place of Freemasons such as Paul Revere. It was in fact often referred to as the Freemasons' arms, or the headquarters of the Revolution. The undercurrent of Freemasonry was as unmistakable in the American Revolution as it was in the French. This fact helps explain a phenomenon that confused me for a long time regarding the Founding Fathers of the US. I had always believed that the Founding Fathers of the United States were Christians. American Christians often claim them as such, and I've often heard it preached from American churches. And that isn't the unusual part. When you read the words of the Founding Fathers, it's easy to come to that conclusion. After all, all the presidents mention God and give him honour in their inauguration speeches. And there are a myriad of other quotations from early American leaders which highlight their belief in God's supremacy over the nation. The confusing part is that American atheists also claim the Founding Fathers were atheists, and what is more, they can produce direct quotations of their own to support their position as well. We have this unique situation where the Founding Fathers have managed to become all things to all men. To atheists, they were atheists. To Christians, they were Christians. Take John Adams, the second President of the United States, for example. He is quoted as saying, Twenty times in the course of my late reading have I been upon the point of breaking out. This would be the best of all possible worlds if there were no religion in it. Atheists love that quotation. It was also during his administration that the Treaty of Peace and Friendship was drawn up, which states in Article 11 that The government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. Adams also said, The divinity of Jesus is made a convenient cover for absurdity. Nowhere in the Gospels do we find a precept for creeds, confessions, oaths, doctrines and whole cartloads of other foolish trumpery that we find in Christianity. So he didn't have much time for Christianity, right? But then we find him writing in a letter to Thomas Jefferson. The general principles on which the fathers achieved independence were the principles of Christianity. I will avow that I then believed, and now believe, that those general principles of Christianity are as eternal and immutable as the existence and attributes of God, and that those principles of liberty are as unalterable as human nature. Or what about his letter to F. A. van der Kemp? Jesus is benevolence personified, an example for all men. The Christian religion, in its primitive purity and simplicity, I have entertained for more than sixty years. It is the religion of reason, equity and love. It is the religion of the head and the heart. So we have direct quotations that appear to disparage Christianity, and then others that appear to praise it, and it's the same for many other founding fathers. This apparent contradiction can only begin to be ironed out when you consider the time period in which the USA was founded. It was that time of transition in the Enlightenment between faith and science, the time when deism gave people a form of God that was diminished and cloudy and where people were starting to turn towards science for answers. Where God ended and where science began was still being worked out at that time, and indeed each of the early American leaders had different ideas on that. It's wrong to think that they were all of the exact same mind, all atheists or all Christians. The majority of the founding fathers of the United States stood somewhere between atheism and Christianity. They were in fact mostly deists or slight variations thereof. 
Many of them were also Freemasons. John Adams was actually a Unitarian, which was an outworking of deism. He believed all religions to be rooted in the truth. Thomas Jefferson, on the other hand, leant far more towards the atheistic end of the scale. The influence of deism explains why many of the early American leaders liked loose terms such as divine providence when referring to God. It's through the fuzziness of deism and the transitional period of that time that the founding fathers of the United States have become all things to all men. They define the Constitution in both religious and secular terms. There's no doubt they respected many of the ideals of Christianity and that they were heavily influenced by Christian ideals, mostly believing it to be the best of all religions. But there is also no doubt that many of them refuted Jesus' claim to be God and denied the outright authority of Christianity above other religions. Benjamin Franklin openly voiced his doubts about the divinity of Jesus, for example. And it's also frustratingly clear when reading the words of the Founding Fathers that when they referred to the corruption of Christianity, they were in fact thinking of the corrupt Catholic Church. Many of them had fallen into the trap of thinking that Catholicism was a natural outworking of the Bible. It was their bid to escape those oppressive hierarchical systems of Europe that led them to want to water down the Bible and the idea of God. Because of their differing beliefs about where God ended and where science began, they also differed about how much God intervened with his creation. Some thought God did and some thought he didn't. It's exactly because of that cloudy transitional period between God and science that quotes can now be cherry-picked from the Founding Fathers to support both religious and secular worldviews. One true benefit America did have in those early times, however, was the influx of Puritans escaping religious persecution in Europe. Although they are often caricatured today as being plain, boring and colourless, if the United States has anyone to thank for their Christian heritage and the moral goodness upon which the country was built, it is that people group above anyone else. They too hated the oppressive hierarchical system of Europe, but rather than try to water down God or the Bible, they recognised that the corrupt Catholic system had nothing to do with the Bible at all. They were intent on staying true to what they read in their Geneva Bibles, and I believe it was their godly influence on the nation in those early years, along with the residual influence of the principles of Christianity through the Founding Fathers, that was a major driving force behind America's prosperity and blessing. It's important we establish that before going on to look at the Masonic influence in the United States.